Hey guys, how's it going? Target here. Welcome to the NHL 15 How to Snipe tutorial. I'm really excited to dive into this for you guys, so let's get started. The first thing you need to know about sniping in NHL 15 is that it is absolutely nothing like NHL 14 or 13. You cannot force yourself into situations that create a scoring chance that lead to a snipe goal. You need to be patient and wait for the play to open up. Getting into position is the most important part of the game. The question is, how do you get into position? Well, the easiest way is passing it around between teammates. This can give you all kinds of open ice to put the puck in the back of the net. But from time to time, you will need to create the space yourself. You can do this with a number of different ways. The first way is using the 45 degree cut method. To do a 45 degree cut, simply gain some speed in a straight line, then coast for a bit. Finally, press the left stick up to the left or up to the right. This will cause your player to cut at 45 degrees in either direction and help free up some ice. You can also utilize your right stick by moving it in different directions to deke past defenders. Combining 45 degree cuts, stops and starts, and deking with the right stick will create that open space you need. But, like I said before, you need to be patient. Do not force the play if it isn't there. The great thing about NHL 15 is the realism in the gameplay. The authenticity to the plays are incredibly accurate and the game plays just like real hockey. I said this in NHL 14 sniping tutorial and it is definitely even truer in this one. The easy part is sniping, the hard part is getting into position. Let's take a look at a few examples here that outline what I'm talking about and demonstrate proper sniping techniques. In this first example, you can see how teamwork paid off and a relentless cycle created an opportunity for Purcell. This is something you will be doing a lot of in NHL 15 passing the puck to create that opportunity. Let's slow things down a bit and I'll show you how the passing of the Oilers created open space for Purcell to score this goal. It all starts with his drive from Yakupov. He is able to get the puck in deep in the flame zone and while it isn't the cleanest possession, he is still able to main con maintain control of the puck deep in their zone. When he gets tied up along the boards, he looks for an option. The safest place to play the puck is away from your own net and so he elects to move the puck along the boards and behind the flames net. Perron reads this play and advances for the loose puck. Perron then cycles the puck back the other way. Yakupov drives the front of the net for an option but is immediately covered and so Perron dishes to Purcell who immediately dishes the puck back to Petrie on the point to relieve pressure. This pass takes Purcell out of the zone completely leaving only four Oilers in the zone but it also only leaves four flames. Now, because Purcell is the offensive player, he has the advantage of knowing where the play is going. Also, Giordano makes a huge mistake of following him all the way out of the zone. Because of this, Giordano is now in a foot race with Purcell and is losing by quite a margin. This leaves a ton of space for Purcell to receive the puck from Petrie and utilize the screen in front of the net established by both Perron and Yakupov to pot one over the blocker of Hiller. Using a screen like this in NHL 15 is one of the easiest ways to score a beauty snipe. You leave the goalie searching for holes between players and more often than not, barring the puck striking a screening player, it's going in the net. Take a look at when Purcell is ready to shoot. There are literally four players jamming up the slot in front of Hiller. He has absolutely zero chance to react to this release. Let's take a look at a second example of teamwork paying off. Like I said before, passing the puck is crucial. This goal is a prime example of just that. What I really like about it though, is that not only is it a great pass, but it is also a fantastic release. I'm going to break this one down too. As Edom gains the zone, he ends up having two Bruins, Chara and Krejci, attempt to cover him. Because of this, the two players collide, slowing them down, and giving Edom only Dennis Seidenberg to contend with. Cogliano is seen approaching the slot down the center of the ice. A simple pass from Edom, past to committed Seidenberg, creates a ton of open ice for Cogliano. Cogliano then steps in closer to Rask and with a nice little toe drag fools Rask into thinking that he might be going back across the crease, but instead opens him right up for a nice snipe on the glove side. By bringing the puck back behind him slightly, Cogliano creates more power on the shot. Sometimes doing this reduces the accuracy, but when you're in this close you're pretty much guaranteed to place it in the mesh. Now, the distance that your player is from the goal when you shoot the puck plays a huge part in how likely you are to score. If you are pretty much within the face-off circles in terms of distance from the net, you have a much better chance of scoring. Let me show you an example of where this is the case. For the most part, the best opportunity you can get on net from in close is when you are already in position. When you are in a face-off in the opposition end, 
you are in a prime scoring position, provided that you can win that faceoff. By winning this faceoff with a tie-out, Giroud allows Voracek to skate in, grab the puck off the dot, and release a quick snap over Mike Smith's glove. Now, why did this shot work so well, and will it work every time? Well, the reason this shot works so well is because of the blown coverage of Oliver ekman Larson. He completely missed his check on Voracek, which gave him all the time in the world to place his shot. Also, Voracek is a fantastic shooter, and although Smith is in position to make the save, the quick release caught him off guard, and he was unable to get his glove up in time. Now, this shot will not work all the time because it depends on a number of factors. Number one, the coverage by the furthest back D-man. Number two, the efficiency of the shooter, and number three, the abilities of the goaltender. If you are playing EASHL and have absolutely jack shooting categories and the D-man blows his coverage, I can almost guarantee a goal. When you're playing game modes that use real NHL goaltenders, then the situation is a bit more of a toss-up. But remember, you want to use a quick snapshot here to catch the goalie off guard. To do a snapshot, simply press up on the right stick. You'll find that sniping over the glove is much easier than over the blocker, especially if the goalie is a butterfly style one. For those of you who aren't familiar with butterfly, it is a tendency to drop down onto their legs to cover the lower parts of the net. It takes away the five hole really well, but it leaves a lot of opening up top. One of the main keys to sniping is getting the goalie to drop into the butterfly so that you have more net to shoot at. Here's an example of the Oilers, and this time you have only one defender back to contend with. You can see that Taylor Hall has the puck, and we all know that Halsey is a great shooter in this game. Hall utilizes a 45 degree cut to the left and also draws the puck back onto his forehand using the right stick in preparation for the shot. You can see that Hiller drops down into the butterfly just as Hall reaches those hash marks. The reason why he does this is because, Hall, because of Hall's proximity to the net. Because he is so close, Hiller is guessing that Hall is going to shoot low, but due to Hall's tremendous shooting ability, he is able to raise the puck quickly and fool Hiller completely. Obviously, this shot goes blocker, but with the glove, it is even more likely to go in, as we saw with the prior example evolving Andrew Cogliano. If you have this kind of space with even a decent shooter, you are pretty much guaranteed to score. This is definitely a situation you can find yourself in when playing EASHL or any other online mode. Human players have a tendency to give up a lot of two-on-ones and breakaways. Just make sure that you are in the zone close to the net when taking these. You can't give the goalie too much time to react, otherwise he'll make the save without a problem. Here's another example where a pass makes a difference in the goal. You can see James Neal drive the left wing and ends up carrying two opposition players with him. In doing so, he creates a two-on-one opportunity. A quick dish to Fisher early on gives Fisher a, full, a good full two steamboats to make a nice little deke to the backhand before finishing with a forehand snipe. It isn't much in terms of beauty, but the simplicity of the play created a golden opportunity for Fisher, who made no mistake. I can't reiterate enough how important it is to gain those areas on the ice before you attempt to score. Give your puck carrier as much time as possible to pick his corner. The final clip I want to show you is something that you can use from time to time. It can work really well under the right circumstances and requires just a little bit of practice to get the right timing. You need to carry the puck up your off wing. For right-handed players, that's the left side, and for left-handed players, that's the right side. Here we have Nicholas Backstrom. Backstrom is a left-handed player and is skating in on his off wing. What you want to do is skate towards the face-off dot in the far zone. Once you hit the blue line, you want to coast. Coasting gives us the ability to do a 45-degree cut, deke more precisely, and also shoot more accurately. In this situation, we are going to be doing a deke. Once you hit the bottom of the face-off circle, you're going to do the backhand to forehand deke. To do this deke, simply hold the right stick to the right for left-handed players, or left for right-handed players, so that the puck is on the backhand. Then, roll the stick past 6 o'clock, that's the bottom of the toggle, and around to the other side. This will cause your player to do an animation that will create some space for himself towards the inside of the ice. Notice, after Backstrom does this deke, just where he ends up. He finds himself just behind the hash marks with Lack's gloved hand closest to him. Like I said before, the glove is much easier to snipe on than the blocker. You want to release that puck almost immediately after doing this deep. There are a couple of things to consider when doing this deep, so let me, let me rewind this a little bit here. Look at Backstrom's positioning in relation to the defender. You can see that the defender has a lot about 5-6 to six feet of space to work with. This was created by our speed entering the zone. 
When doing this deke, if the defender is too close, you will end up running into them and turning over the puck. Keep this in mind when trying to do this. Trying to do this when the defenseman is skating stride for stride beside you will also yield negative results. So, try to execute this when the defenseman is skating backwards and is giving you slightly more than a stick's length of distance. The second thing you want to look out for is the amount of space available to you in the slot. Because not only do you need to beat the checking defender, you also have to keep the puck away from the other back checkers. Here you can see that Verbata and Edler are both way too far away from the play to even have a prayer of checking Backstrom. They are too worried about the two other players driving the net. This is why this play works best when it is an even rush like this, 3-on-3. Three three. You're able to isolate a defender and exploit the coverage provided by the other two players to make your move. Just like all snipes in NHL 15, this isn't a sure goal by any stretch of the imagination. It requires timing, patience, a good shooter, a good skater, and a good deeker. Well guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you have found this to be very informative and helpful as well. Hopefully you'll be able to utilize a number of these strategies to your advantage and win games in whatever game mode you choose to play. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more great tutorials and other content. Follow me on Twitter at TargetOd18 for all the latest in NHL 15 news and other events in my life. Until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out on the ice.